Well, hello folks, this is Joe from iRepair Electronics, and today we're going to go over uh, replacing an RP-SMA connector on a Teradec receiver. Um, and these uh, connectors are adhered with uh, that god-awful uh, solder paste. And uh, the trouble with solder paste is it doesn't like to come off very easily. There's very little flux in it and as you can see I'm having trouble trying to uh, get that solder off with my iron so what we have to do is then add a little more solder to the connection and then fill it in and then pull it off um, and I've gone over this technique before but in case you haven't seen it, uh, this is a pretty common technique for uh, connections that don't have a lot of uh, solder flux inside them anymore, or that perhaps they're very old, uh, or it could also be uh, uh, high silver content. You know, some of the newer connectors have uh, less uh, lead and more silver to them, so... Uh, in this case, you would also want to do this technique to get rid of all that uh, nasty-ass solder that's in there. Um, so, as you can see, I'm just using the wick, uh, working along with it. Uh, that tip that's in this iron right here is a, uh, that's a standard 700 degree tip. In the old uh, Metcal uh, soldering station that I use, and uh, works pretty good. But it's not. Uh, it's also very broad tip. This is a good tip for uh, these legs that you see here. In other situations, like that center pin you see in the very center there, well, we're going to use a, a different tip for that. I'll show you that in a moment, but uh, right now we're just coming along and uh, trying every opportunity to uh, get this crazy little connector off. Uh, problem with this, uh, with what I'm attempting to do is, uh, you know, it's both sides of the circuit board, and uh, even with adding uh, regular 6040 uh, solder to it, it doesn't like to come off. Uh, you'd have to heat it really, really hot to uh, get it to come off, hence why I'm taking snippers to <laughs> the edges of the thing, because it just takes too much effort to, uh, too much heat as well to try and get these off uh, just by soldering and desoldering all the time. So, take uh, the real fine tip x uh snippers to them um, and then see about uh, getting the, uh, the tip back on there and uh, making it come off. So right now I'm grabbing a different tip and this is made by Thermaltronics. It's a uh, similar in every way to the Metcal tips except uh, they're a lot cheaper. That red band I just pointed out to you is their indication that it's a 900 degree uh, tip. So these things get quite hot and are actually quite perfect for getting into tight spaces with this type of solder you know that has little to no flux in it. Again you can see them about to uh, get that tip, add a, add some solder to it, and uh, try and get get it in there so I can then remove it off of the PC board. And so right here we're going to 
take a little more flux and uh, pull it off after we've added it. And uh, if you're curious, that's about a one millimeter tip at the very tippy tip of that. And um, it's good for getting into tight spots, which this most certainly is. And now I have uh, effectively removed the solder. I'm snipping that pin, which is off camera at the moment, but hey, <laughs> what can I do? And it's off. It's out of there. Now I can freely and easily remove the uh, the tabs that are left on the uh, circuit board. So once we're done pulling off the tabs, uh, you want to get in there and clean up the surface of that circuit board because the uh, the replacement connector doesn't have a lot of space in between the uh, the pins or the, the tabs as you might want to call them that come off of the connector and our sand the circuit board is sandwiched in between the sets of pins. So when I clear off as much of that solder as humanly possible which isn't too tough to do uh, just get in there and try not to knock off any of the tiny little components like that little capacitor you see to the left of the tab I'm working on right there uh, I'm going to be careful trying not to knock those around And in some cases, you need to add more solder to remove the solder effectively. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. So here's a fun little fact about the uh, RPA SMA connectors. The little pin, the center pin, is always longer than you need it to be. So you gotta get in there with your snips and trim it down. There, so it looks like we have a good fit, and we can finally solder it back into place. Now, once you finally have a uh, corner soldered in, you can work on the others. You're attaching the center pin. And then the rest of the connectors will come next.
So there we have it. Finally. Soldered into place and time to clean it. We're going to use the uh, Flux Off from Kentronics, which has this nifty little brush. And uh, the cleaner comes right through the brush tip. And you brush it along there vigorously. Clean it up good. This stuff works great. It really gets rid of all the flux and uh, leaves it nice and clean. I'll air it dry with uh, some compressed air uh, after getting both sides of the course. Blast it again. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. And of course, the one last thing you want to do is make sure that your connectors are aligned properly uh, because you need it to uh, line up in the case that it's going into. Uh, here I'm showing off the uh, the other connector that needs to come off and uh, get replaced uh, but we've already done one so I'm not gonna sit through that again. So jumping ahead a little bit I've already installed the uh, the receiver uh, mounts, the gold mounts, and the receiver section together inside the case. Um, just double checking, making sure that everything looks lined up nice. And uh, you can see here that, that it is. And for any of you that don't have a lot of experience putting these uh, Terra Deck cases back together, you have to wiggle on that side first where, with all the switches, get them to line in, and then kind of come down and then make sure all your washers are out of the way. Uh, they invariably will get hung up on things, and uh, so that you see the switches are setting out the power switch anyway and the USB connector uh, they're lined up pretty good so looks like it's time to start screwing this beastie back together So after snugging down all your nuts, uh, time to give it a try and see what happens. And hey, it's not blowing up, so that's always a good sign. And uh, here's our transmitter. Put the antennas on the transmitter. Um, since I have the transmitter and the receivers so close together, you actually don't have to put uh, your antennas on to the receiver. It'll pair in uh, when they're this close together. So, typical pairing mode, stick this stupid little paper clip in there, 
make the red light flash hit OK to go ahead and pair it and you'll see it come up on the screen and then once it finishes adding at some point the uh, screen will show the picture going into the thing and hey look at that there's a picture so uh, like to uh, double check check our work make sure everything's locking up nice Connecting right to it, no problems. That's a beautiful thing. So, what I'll do next uh, off camera is uh, attach the antennas to the receiver and then walk around the shop with it, make sure everything's working good. Um, but for now, uh, that's the end of today's video. So, if you like this, please subscribe uh, down below and um, tell me your thoughts if you like it if you don't like it whatever let me know and uh, we'll see you next time thanks for tuning in